hey, it's Todd. And I'm talking about experience. Um, in this case, the traditional experience point uh, method of leveling up characters and also the milestone leveling that was introduced in 5th edition and presumably uh, used elsewhere, though 5th edition was my first, I guess, experience with it. Pun intended, I suppose. In any case, uh, experience points are the ways, you know, if you, if you play Dungeons and Dragons, how your characters will gain levels so that you would originally uh, it was, it was a chart that was based per class. So each class had its own experience point chart and you would get experience for doing things. Originally it was almost entirely from retrieving treasure uh, with a small pittance that you would get for defeating monsters. And then later it sort of morphed into being more or less a combat reward uh, and now it's kind of morphed a little bit again, uh, particularly when we start talking about milestone leveling as to combat and perhaps story or narrative driven goals. So you would uh, gain a certain amount of experience, usually measured, I think, even at from first to second level, over a thousand experience points. And it would gradually get larger and larger until at the end, either you would just stop at a certain level or you could keep gaining some small benefits for additional experience, but, you know, essentially you had kind of maxed out your character, but each step of that would be uh, rated for a certain amount of experience. So you'd go from needing, say, 2,000 experience to level, and then the next level, maybe you need 4,000 experience, and then you might need 8,000, then 16,000, and then at certain intervals, the referee, the, the dungeon master, would award experience. Some Dungeon Masters might do it at the end of a session. Some might do it at the end of a an adventure. Some might do it at the end of a combat. You know, if you're doing it on, a, if you're running a lot of combat-based experience, you might get to the end of a combat, and the, the DM will say, hey, this is how much experience for that combat. Uh, at the beginning, when it was mostly treasure-oriented, you would kind of know how much experience you had because that was the amount of gold, gold coins that you had, you know, picked up from these dungeons. There were some variables you'd need to figure out later. For instance, if you got... Uh, treasures that weren't gold pieces, obviously you'd have to have them appraised or know how to appraise them before you figured out how much you had. So in that case, you know, it made more sense that it would be when you'd get back to town and be able to sell and appraise things, you would know, you know, how much experience you got. With fifth edition, they sort of adapted this idea of the milestones, which is a way of basically taking out the bookkeeping of individual experience points and tracking each one or each 10 or 100 and replacing with basically you reach a certain milestone, a certain point in the game, and then you would level up. And basically everyone would level up at that milestone, at that event. And it's really up to you as a referee, as a, as a DM, to decide where those milestones, where those points are, where everyone would level up. Uh, sometimes it's obvious if you're playing a really narrative-driven game and you have different you know, different dungeons, different things. Okay, you're going to beat this, you know, introductory boss. Maybe that's, you know, a good time to milestone. Then maybe when you take on and you complete different objectives, each one of those objectives is a milestone. And so it's very easy if you're playing sort of a narrative-driven game to use milestones as an easy way of saying, hey, you have, you're working your way through the story and each time you hit a certain point, you know, you level up. It's very neat. And I think for, particularly for casual games, I think it works well or for games where it is very heroic. You're not really interested in, in people dying and player character uh, and player characters dying. Or if you are, then they're just going to bring in someone else at the same level as the rest of the party because everyone's going to be marching at this fixed beat, whatever beat you as the DM create, they're going to follow it. And so it's hard to, you know, it, it starts to work less well if people start to fall off, right? Because if, everyone's at fifth level and you're working on this beat and you bring somebody in and they're at third level. If you just keep the milestone leveling, you know, without any sort of changes, they're never going to catch up because each milestone, each character will keep moving up. The person who's two levels back is always going to be two levels back. I think the other thing it does, and this is for another time is sort of on the balancing issue, because if you're then, you know, creating your own classes uh, or you're using say on Earth Arcana or things like that, that maybe haven't been totally play tested, uh, the balance issues can come up because each class has to be balanced at each level because everyone's going to level at the same time. Back in the day, you could have a class like a paladin that was stronger than other classes because they had very high requirements and also their XP requirements were bigger. Or, you know, originally, if you're in, you know, basic expert, the elf 
was both a, was sort of a combo magic user fighter, but they had maybe double the XP requirements of a normal fighter. So yes, their first level they're super strong, but they're not going to reach second level until the fighters almost reach third level or even you know beyond. So those are those ways of on a class to class basis using experience as sort of to level the playing field. But if you're using milestones, you don't have that leveling of the playing playing field in that way. Same thing with, you know, I come from an sort of an old school background, you know, you would die, you'd start at level one. And, you know, a lot of people I think now would cry out, say, that's ah, unfair. You know, it's, you know, it's, you know, impossible. But when you're going back to the XP for loot and the way the XP requirements scale at level, if I'm with a party of say seventh level characters and I'm at first level, I'm going to actually catch up pretty fast. You know, sometimes you can even game the system a little bit by giving me more of the treasure than others because it was based on how much treasure you brought back. So if I got to carry, if I got to basically be, have more treasure, I would come back. And the other thing is, is that the scale, right? If they're getting seventh level scale of treasure and those amounts from first level, that's a big, boost to me. So I would then, while they're trying to work their way from seventh to eighth level, maybe seventh and ninth level, I would probably be speed, you know, speed leveling up to maybe fourth or fifth level, just because I'm going to be getting, you know, so much treasure, right? The treasure that I need to level up is relatively small. I may only need say 2000 gold pieces slash experience to level up. They need 50,000, right? So per, you know, per of their player. So you know, it's going to start to even out. And then over time, if I survive and I can sit in the back of the party and again, because it's not really combat oriented, it's not that important. It's more important that I survive or my character survives through these adventures to get that treasure than necessarily that they're on the front line, you know, dealing damage or something, at least by the book. I know some, some GMs will have, um, you know, experience where it's experience per hit or experiences per kill. And obviously that definitely creates a disadvantage if you're low level and you're less likely to get those hits and get those kills. But using sort of the rules as rules as written old school experience, they were kind of mitigating factors to get you back in the game. But with milestones as they are, they don't have that. And so you either have to bring people back at the same level or you have to start subdividing milestones or doing things like that. And then once you take that milestone and you start having to cut it up or do different things with it, it starts to resemble more and more the regular you know, experience points. Now, granted, if you were coming from tracking thousands of experience points and you're down to tracking five or six points, let's say if you were going to subdivide up your milestones because you have people sort of a level split, and you're going to say, okay, one major milestone is equal to three minor milestones. And this guy's three levels back. So if he has two minor milestones, he'll level up. And these other people need a major milestone. It loses some of that simplicity. Because I think, right, that simplicity of the milestones has that cost. And, and one of those costs is that it really works best if everyone's at the same level and then in, if everything's balanced at that level. So, you know, if you're using some kind of homebrew class and they're not balanced level to level with other classes, it can show some flaws, right? If your class at eighth level becomes some kind of juggernaut and it doesn't, it doesn't have some kind of other thing to keep it in balance with other classes, it will definitely show its flaws. Whereas in another system... You could just say, well, you're going to need twice as much experience as everyone else. So, yeah, you're going to be awesome at 8th level, but you're going to stay at 8th level for a long time and everyone else will move up to 10th. And then you'll hit ninth level and then you'll gain, you know, so you could kind of spread it out. But milestones don't really allow that. So it definitely enforces a different balancing requirement that I'm sure Wizards has taken into account for the most part with their, with their you know, the regular classes, but certainly something that needs to be, you know, examined when you're dealing with, you know, homebrew and whatnot. I'm actually... I see the, uh, you know, one of the things that people get on about regular experience is all the bookkeeping involved. I actually never had a big problem with the bookkeeping. And I do think there is something to like looking at your bank account or looking at something else where you're seeing those points stack up and you have thousands upon thousands of experience, which is sort of a really nice look at everything that you've done. You know, it's kind of like, wow, I'm rich. I've got 200,000 experience. I do think there is something to that. It just it can be something that's sort of rewarding. It's just a number to look at a sort of scale of how far you've come. I mean, obviously levels do that too, but there's something about seeing those big numbers, um, you know, that, that can give you kind of a feeling of show your accomplishment. But I can definitely see how the milestones is a nice feature to keep it simple. If you're playing with a casual group, if you're playing in the kind of game where it's important to keep everybody grouped together and you just want to, you just want to have the game sort of flow, you know, the milestones is a nice way to, you know, keep track of your experience points without, uh, without making it a hassle. 
right? Uh, but it's not necessarily great for everything. I would think in a sandbox where maybe it's more gritty and you're going for more of that kind of raw, you know, I don't say realistic, but maybe grim dark is the right word. And you want to play with more of an old school feel where people die, they have to really be sort of disadvantaged for a while. Then milestones as they are in the book can be a little bit clunky because like I said, you have somebody who goes down a level, there's no way for them to catch up. If that's important to you, if it's important to you that each player character has the opportunity to equalize with their other, you know, their other characters and come back in a fold. It may not be if the character's happy being two levels behind and really it's not that big of a deal. If they're two levels behind a lot of it, it's just more in the player's mentality, right. Of, of, of not wanting to feel left behind or wanting to feel as powerful as their other party members or feeling that somehow they're less because they're level eight and everybody's level nine. Some people aren't going to care. They're into playing their character. And if they're level eight or in everyone else is 10 or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. But for a lot of players, they're going to want to catch up. They're going to feel that they need to be at the same level. And it's hard to do that with milestones without starting to tweak it. And once you start to tweak it and tear it apart, you end up building your own sort of mini experience point, you know, system. Uh, I think the other thing that experience points just as tracking them individually and advantages that they have, if you want to use it, is that you can really reward them for the things that you want in your game. So, for example, um, and this is particularly for things that may not be across all the characters, right? It's one thing if you're using a sort of milestone system, the party is going to perform and the whole party benefits, regardless of what individuals do in the party. And that's great. And for a lot of games and casual games, it's going to be great. But for other things, you may want to reward particular behavior. If you want to reward players for showing up to a game, that may be something you want to do. Well, not everybody's going to show up. So that's not something that a milestone to work with. But you could give somebody, you could throw each player, you know, some, some experience points if they show up for that game. Maybe you want to have players engaging with their background and their backstories and their personal goals. And that's something, again, that's not going to be across the whole party. It's going to be for individuals. You want to you want to reward their particular effort to fulfill these character goals that they've set for themselves. That would be something that individual experience points can account for. As I mentioned, you know, earlier back in the beginning of the, of the game, uh, you know, back in the original, the white box and whatnot, uh, XP was given for treasure that was acquired from dungeons and dangerous places. And so that obviously sets the goals for the motivation. You know what you have to do to get it. And that's the goal. It's not killing monsters. It's not, saving princesses necessarily it's getting loot and you can take that and again you can you can change it to be what you want to encourage in your game so maybe you say oh i'm not this game is not about getting treasure and it's not about uh, fighting monsters i want this to be a game of exploration i want to to set up a world and i want the players to go and be you know be the be the people who went to the farthest edges of the world the unknown places and map that and bring that knowledge back so then you can take that experience model and now you can say, okay, for every hex you explore and you can define whatever it is to explore it, you're going to get X amount of experience points for every, you know, strange monument that you find that's experience points for every ancient book that you bring back that will expand the knowledge of the civilized, you know, world that's experience points. So you can incentivize these particular things that you want to do. Now, you can do that with milestones, but with milestones, you're really doing it on sort of a narrative level, right? You're building this kind of progression. And so that works if you have a particular story. If it's Lord of the Rings and your your end goal is to deposit the ring in Mount Doom and you know you have these steps, you have to go th to go to Rivendell and see Master Elrond. That's a clear you know, milestone. Now, maybe you have to get to Lothlorien. That's a clear milestone. Then, you know, each step you can see them take has a clear milestone. But if it's more of a sandbox thing where you're going to leave it to your players and say, where do you go? What do you want to do? It may not be so clean and neat to use milestones, but with, ex with experience, they can really look at the world and say, Hey, we want to go to this really close place. And it's not a lot of experience points because it's nearby, but we can, we're going to do that. Or we can say, we want to set our sights on this far mountain and, and do that. And each one of those will have different experience mounts and they can really gauge and plan what they want to do, which is sort of a lot of what the old school game was, is you really didn't go into a dungeon. A lot of dungeons, you know, were mega dungeons anyway. You weren't going to get to the bottom of Castle Greyhawk on any given adventure. You were going to take a shot at it, jump in, get what you could, get out and slowly go deeper and not only go deeper to see what's down there, but because each, each level down was harder and, and more difficult, you know, you were going to get everything you could out of the easy levels and then Hopefully you level up and you get better geared up and then you'll go down a deeper level because it'll be more dangerous, but it'll also have more treasure. 
and you're sort of making those decisions. And those don't tend to lend themselves to milestones because what is the milestone if you're investigating part of a level of a dungeon and you're maybe avoiding as many encounters as you're actually fighting and you're just grabbing loot and leaving because that was a lot of the game, right? You're going in, you're making this run at it and you're getting out. You may not reach a moment where you go, aha, I've done thing X and that is a milestone. Now, yeah, you can always make it a milestone, but I think when milestones work best is when they make sense. And I think also when they're transparent or as transparent as possible, I think when players know they have to go and defeat, you know, or get through a place, you have to reach Rivendell. That's a clear goal and they can kind of understand that milestone. Otherwise it becomes sort of random and sort of up to, you know, GM, DM fiat, uh, which is a term about, you know, and it basically seems sort of arbitrary and the dungeon master, the referee is just kind of deciding it sort of on a whim. And I think things work best. I know players, I think, respect more when they feel like they can understand why things are happening, not just, hey, random milestone, then it might be a long time before another one. And then this one's quick again. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to them. I think when you're using the milestones inside of a narrative structure where each one of these sort of endpoints, whether you want to call it an episode or an adventure or a leg of their overall journey, you know, it makes sense. And then everything kind of fits into place. I think when you're playing more of that open sandbox game, that's going to be messier. There's going to be lots of maybe half goals that are made, or they're going to make some progress and get set back and they're going to be kind of moving around and they may be setting their own goals and doing their own things that for the players to be able to, make smart decisions about what to risk. They need to know what the reward is. And then I think the individual experience points make a lot of sense because a, the rewards are clear and they can either go for small rewards and then take little incremental steps of character growth, or they can go for those big rewards and try to get a whole jump or anywhere in between. And again, you have that ability to set these goals as for whatever they want, whether it's character based, whether it's based on, you know, exploration and whether it's based on treasure. And if you want to, you know, based on combat, you can really, tailor those to your game and tailor those to not only to how the party does, but how individual player characters operate, you know, in their party towards their goals and towards the party goals, which is something that with milestones is a little bit difficult. But I think that, you know, both types of experience tracking and types of ways of weathering, uh, measuring a player's experience, character's experience, you know, can both work in different games or just different ways of sort of doing the same thing. I think you'll find some people that really like milestones. I think you'll find some people like me, maybe that really cling or really enjoy sort of the older school approach. You know, neither one is right or wrong. It's really what works best for your game, but it's something that maybe if you're starting a game, you'll want to think about is how you want your game, you know, to be, if you're like I said, doing these kind of big narrative arcs, milestones may be the way to go. If you're doing more of a sandbox open sort of, uh, you know, open type game where it's really up to the players. Maybe you want to let it be individual experience. And obviously, you know, if you're working with players, is all stuff you want to kind of session zero, discuss with your players, see what they like. Some players are going to be totally fine with tracking that experience. Some might balk at it, maybe for them, regardless of sort of the other factors, maybe then, you know, milestone works better. If some, you know, players really want to engage on things in their own terms and really see their own characters grow. And sometimes there's even that competitive spirit, right. Of saying who can, I can do more than this other, you know, this other player, then, you know, maybe you can stoke those fires with, you know, individual, you know, experience increments. So it's really up to you and how you want to run your game. But uh, that's all I have on, you know, milestone versus I guess, traditional experience points. Uh, if you like this video, please think about subscribing. It helps me out a lot. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to uh, help support me in that way. But otherwise, I will talk to you later.